Professor, he's taking your advice. Morning. For the last several days on CNN, you have been saying, rewrite it. Explain. Well, he said there's an imminent threat, and we know he's going to lose the stay application, so it will take months before he gets to the Supreme Court and achieves a partial victory, which I think he will achieve. And so it's only logical for him to either rescind the order and moot the Ninth Circuit opinion, uh, or uh, simply revise the order and institute a new one while taking a slow track up to the Supreme Court. The last thing he wants is a four-to-four -four affirmance of the Ninth Circuit's striking down of his order. So he's smart to try to rewrite the order now, get rid of the application of the order to green card holders and legitimate visa holders, apply it only to people who have never been in the United States, have no contact with the United States, have no standing to raise this issue. And in that way, he can accomplish both goals, protect the security of the country and not have a constitutional crisis on his hands. Do you think that he expands or limits that list of seven nations. Does he put in a Christian nation so as to avoid an argument over the Establishment Clause? That would be foolish. Uh, there is no Christian nation today that fits into that category. What would he do, throw in Armenia or try to throw in Israel <laughs> as a Jewish nation? It wouldn't work. Uh, in fact, he campaigned on the issue of combating Islamic terrorism, something that the Obama administration refused to mention. And he has the right to say that we're going to focus on those nations that, that export Islamic terrorism. Of course, they're going to be Muslim nations. And he also has the right to say we're going to give special preference to religious minorities who are the victims of Islamic oppression. They are Christians. They are Baha'is. They are Kurds. They fall into a number of categories. And it's okay to mention religious groups if there is a secular purpose, and the secular purpose is to rescue them from prosecution. So I think he gets the better of the constitutional argument if he can narrow the uh, executive order and distinguish between people who are American persons, green card holders, uh, others, and those who are really strangers to the country and have no standing and no right to come into the country. Am I, I right in saying that he, that he kind of backed himself into a corner because insofar as the order is predicated on an imminent threat, he can't then sit back and allow the litigation to play itself out for a time period that frankly would be longer than the ban he sought to impose. And that was my point exactly. As soon as the Ninth Circuit ruled, I said he had a conundrum. Uh, right. He had backed himself into the corner by saying that this was imminent, so I think he has no choice but to do this. But look, he's listening, and he's understanding now for the first time that we do operate within a system of checks and balances. Not only do the courts check, but now states have the ability to bring lawsuits and check the national government. This drama is going to continue for months on, on uh, in the future because we have figured out a way of making sure that the president can't just operate without our system of checks and balances. So he's going to have to get used to living within our system of separation of powers where the judiciary is as important in our system of governance as the presidency is. Well, he's listening. He's listening to Harvard Law Professor Alan Dershowitz, and he could do a hell of a lot less. Thank you, Professor. Appreciate your being here.